But as you can imagine, do most companies have as much money as Microsoft or Google or Facebook? Yeah, no. So for a long time, a lot of companies would say, well, you know, we just can't afford it. It's really expensive. It's really time consuming. Well, there's an alternative. Nielsen came out with what he calls discount usability testing. And discount usability testing is actually what we are going to be doing in this class. Right? Discount usability testing doesn't have these large ends. Right? You can have a test that has a f as few as four or five participants. Because Nielsen, who does a lot of research in this, what he actually found is that you can have as few as four or five users and you are able to uncover 80% of the problems with a product. It's a pretty high percentage for having such a small n. You incorporate this into an iterative cycle where you are testing, you're applying fixes, and then you test again. Right? This happens a lot in agile software development. And so it can help you really pull out what are some of the major problems or potential problems with the product. But it also has its drawbacks. The main drawback is you can't generalize from it. Right? It does not provide valid and reliable results for things like user preferences because you have just a few people. It's not going to provide you information on marketing data and those sorts of things. So just as things like focus groups are limited, discount usability testing is also limited. Very useful, but you have to be very cognizant of what it is and is not good for. So I think we went through these. We went through these last class, right? Characteristics of a usability test? Real customers? Can we do this? Are you, yes? No? You're not sure? Should I do it again? OK, I'll do it again. I'm getting no response. All right, so let's go through the characteristics of a usability test. Right, we want to remember these things when we are creating our tasks and putting together our tests. What's the number one thing you need to remember? Which is first on my list. That I've mentioned like three times in this class already. Use real customers. Yes, use real customers, use real users. All right, I, I know that I'm emphasizing this and it sounds really obvious. But is common sense always common? Yeah, not so much. These are things that seem to be obvious, but there's so many times that it doesn't happen, including for your group projects. So make sure you use real users. All right, you want your customers to perform actual tasks. So you want them to be real world tasks, something that they may actually do with that product or that, or that site. Right, you want to make sure you record data, both qualitative and quantitative. You want to take notes. You want to make sure you include customer comments. One of the things we're going to be talking about next week is the Think Aloud protocol, and I'll show you an example of that. You want to make sure that you are as objective as possible. You know when we're talking about wording in terms of your tasks? Are you supposed to lead your participants? No, no it needs to be neutral. It needs to be objective. Oh, and by the way, this also means that if you're testing something that you think really sucks, don't tell your participants that. You're ha oh, you know, they're having trouble. Yeah, I know it sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, don't do that. It's hard, I know. Don't do that. Objective. So it's facilitated by a skilled specialist. Who, who are the skilled specialists in this class? You guys. Right, so you guys are, are acting as these skilled specialists. Right, and is also observed by that skilled specialist. But again, remember our limitations? Right, it's not based on very many customers. So, in your group projects, don't generalize. Don't state that all users are going to experience this when you've only tested five people. Because what do you think I will do to your report if I find that? I will take points off. 
no generalization. Remember that you need to be concerned about the guinea pig effect. You guys know what that is, right? Guinea pig effect. You're being observed. You feel like you are a guinea pig in the lab, you know, like a little rat in a maze. Make sure you're cognizant of that, especially as you are going through your tasks. You may have to remind your users. Tell them in the beginning, tell them during the test, tell them at the end. But also remember, again, it's not thorough by nature. You're only doing five tasks. So you also means you can't make global statements about the particular product or the site. Only about what you're really looking at. And also remember that some things may or may not be apparent. Things like colors and fonts. Some users may say something, others may not. It sometimes may affect them, sometimes it may not. Oh, and one of the things that you're not testing is accessibility. But when you are designing a product, you do need to think about it.